Hi, Morrissey here again. And today we're gonna be trying to assemble a computer. This is just a guide to assemble your own computer. It's not actually what you must follow step by step. There's no way or no, nothing written on stone or written anywhere that this is the way you should go to assemble your computer. So I'm gonna give you just my own way to assemble a computer if you're trying to assemble your own computer. Computer is just like building a Lego blocks with just fewer parts. And uh, we're gonna be starting with a motherboard to try to assemble things together. So I have a motherboard here. I'm gonna be using my MSI motherboard, the Game Gaming Plus. And this is a mini board, so it's not a very big one. And firstly, I'm gonna be using the box of the motherboard as where to put my board. You can find yourself a soft surface or the mouse pad, if you have a mouse pad or big enough, um, or both mouse and keyboard pads that is big enough to put your board inside. So, this is my board, and I'm gonna be starting from the processor. I have an AMD Ryzen processor that I would like to use, and it has a built-in uh, graphics, or so random uh, video graphics, uh, in the processor, so I'm gonna be using that for this build. So let's go to the things you need. You need to have a checklist. So I wrote my checklist on a paper here, which I have beside me, and the things I need a casing. I have a casing beside me here. You need a casing. Uh, the processor is here. The cooling fan. I'm gonna be using the one that it, that comes with a processor, which is a built-in. Uh, fan. It's not very expensive if you're trying to buy one because we have different ones around. Uh, memory stick is here. I'm having an 8 gigabyte uh, for DDRAM4. I'm going to be using one. Later I'm going to be using two, but one for now. Motherboard, which is on the table. I'm not going to be using any graphics card because it has a built-in graphics card also. A storage device, I'm going to be using this Western Digital because it's big, it's 2 terabyte, it's around 70 something euros or 70 something dollars and I'm going to be using it because I need more space for my computer. Power pack, I'm going to be using this Cooler Master 600 watts power pack. It's much, it's very much for this stuff I have around me. This is too powerful for it. but. Like I used to say in some of my videos, you can never go wrong with having a good power pack. So that's, then your keyboard, your mouse, and your, yeah, I said mouse pad if you have it for your setup and a screwdriver to use for the video, uh, for the board. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna try to put in my processor, the fan, the RAM until my motherboard before I install it into the case. If you like, you can do it in the case, but because I think the space in the case is not really, really very big enough, so I think it's much better you build yours outside before you now move it into the case. If you have your parts with you, you can follow me as I'm building it one by one so that you can understand everything that comes um, that needs to be followed uh, in the computer so guys um, yeah this is the case okay back to the board I need to install the processor um, and to install the processor, you need to really have to open this. This is what that keeps the processor in space, in place. You bring it up, pull it up a little bit to put in the CPU. And here is the CPU I'm gonna be using. It's an AMD Ryzen CPU. 
You can call it a processor, you can call it a CPU, whatever that comes into your mind. Bring it out from, take it out from the top so that you don't, uh, by mistake, press the pin or break the pin. Um, I'm not sure if you are able to see it very well here, but there's a corner here. There's a gold uh, triangle at this corner. This gold triangle is on only one side, both the Intel and the AMD Ryzen. They have this gold triangle that shows you uh, this is the corner, like a SIM card. If you're installing a SIM card onto your phone, it's almost like the same. If you look on your board, there's a sign here that shows you where that needs to go to. So most of the, like every board shows you the top of the processor. So there's a sign here and that shows you where it needs to go. It's always on one side. You can look around, you don't find it. That is just there, just like that. Uh, number five on your phone that has this dotted whatever on it that shows it's number five. So you're gonna have to align it together, the gold triangle, put it on top, and it just goes in straight just like that, and you close it. The processor is in place. It's not coming out anytime soon. So now we need to, if you like at this point, you can put in your DDRAM, or you put in your fan. So I'm gonna put on in my DDRAM because I wanna see how my fan is gonna fit into it so without uh, the DDRAM blocking it. So I'm gonna insert this first. Like I said, I'm using one for now, but I'll probably be inserting the other one to make it a 16 gigabyte. Uh, this is just a gaming rig and doing some other little, little works. Not for those games that requires a lot of energy, but just the normal games. And here, look onto the board. You're going to see DDRAM A1 and DDRAM B1. You're going to start from the first one, which is the 1. This board on this side, it doesn't move. It's only on this other side that moves. So on some other board, maybe the two of them can be opened together. But here, it's just on this one. Now, here, there's a gap in between. Um... I'm going to use my screwdriver to show it to you. Here, there's a gap in between. It tells you on where to align it here. If you look into the uh, the slot also, you can see there's a, a brick in between here also. Try to align them together and put them inside. And on this board, I have to put this other side first. It goes in first because this doesn't open, unlike some other board they do. And I push it in on the other side here, and you're gonna hear a click. That means it's in. This is locked in place, it's going nowhere, and that is done. So now I go to my fan, my cooling fan. This is the stock fan, the one that comes uh, with the processor. So I'm not gonna be using a graphics card, and I'm not gonna use a customized fan or buy a different fan. I have, you can see I have a fan there from Be Quiet, but I'm not using it from now. So it's there in case we're going to do some other upgrade, I'll show you how to use it. But let's focus on what we have at hand. So this is the one that comes with it. And you can see these four angles. If you check it on the board before you screw it inside, if you turn it this way, because you want the AMD logo to be on top, it's not going to work. So it has to be on the side. If you look at it, then the screws are lines together. Then the AMD logo can work. There are some that requires you to use like a rubber to hold the fan together with this or a clip, but this does not. It has a screw. So it means I have to remove this plate from here to be able to get the fan onto the board. So I'm gonna have to remove that first. Remember to have your board uh, placed in a better place, a better position, so you don't have to use too much force on your board. So it's, when it's on a soft angle, you're not gonna be needing to use uh, too much force on it. So those are my screws from the processor back plate. I remove them gently. Don't rush, you're not going anywhere. 
the most interesting thing about building a computer is for you to have fun. So don't try to rush yourself into it. Have fun, get relaxed while you're building the computer. Enjoy it. Don't rush yourself. Okay, you remember I said um, I put in my DRAM first uh, just because I want to see where it is going to be stopping my fan. If you put the fan along this way, you can see it's the, the RAM is going to be blocking it. You cannot align the screws, these four screws. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well. This is the back plate of the motherboard. That's the processor back plate. There are four screws here. There are different boards with different ways. Like we just removed the one that was old, that was that comes with it originally, and we have the back plate here. The back plate is relaxing under this board. So my processor, I cannot go this way because it's not gonna close well because of the DRAMs. So I'm gonna have to turn it in this other way. I know a lot of you may like to have it straight so that you can see the AMD logo, but it's not going to work. So you have to turn it to the other side. It's good, just gonna have to be on the other side. Maybe later we'll talk about what you need to do to have it straight, but unfortunately now we cannot. So it has to go the way it was intended to be, which is this way. And that is how it's gonna be. So before we pull that and screw it down, we need a timer paste. We need something to keep the CPU and the pro the, the, the aluminum plate on the process on the fan to have a better connection to be able to cool it down. So I have this. You can buy it for some cheaper Europe. Not very expensive. Put a little bit on top, not too much. And if you have a kind of a plate to spread it around, you can as well spread it around. I don't have anything to use to spread it around here. So I'm gonna be using this to spread it a little bit around. So I'm gonna paste it on it and move it a little bit gently. And because I have a knob on it, if you look at it, it's gonna be spread all over. You can see I have a screw it down, but you cannot move it. So it's there, it's gonna work. Push it down a little bit. I'm pushing it down, I'm not pushing down my board. I'm actually pushing down the back plate and I'm gonna screw it down. There's a spring in between the screw and everything. You can see the spring. You push it down. Don't tighten it too much. Press it, it's gonna to get to a stop. It stops. Don't go too hard on it. And everything goes screw down to it gives you that stop feeling. Don't screw too much. When it's hard enough, you stop. And this also is hard enough. Stop. At this stage, I'm using a fan. If you're using a radiator, uh, you have to leave the radiator on to be able to put it into the board and stuff like that. You have to remove the radiator rather to be able to do it. So I, I, I'm gonna connect the fan. So here, this CPU fan one, CPU fan one. And if you look at the other side, um, on where is it? Where is it? On, on the other side here, it said system fan two. This is CPU. This is system. CPU is the processor, and the system is the one that comes with the casing and stuff like that. So there are two on this board. We have system fan two uh, here and system fan one here. It means you can have two fans connected where you can control uh, it from your software to control the fans. So I'm going to insert this cable, which is a four pin, into the system uh, CPU fan on top here. And that's done. It's there. For cable management, you can try to move it the way you want or try to use something to hold it together so it's not going everywhere. But I'm going to leave it up for now until we get to cable management. So this is done. The, the processor is done. The fan is done. The RAM is done. So the next thing we need to do now is you can as well test it. Make sure it works before you put it into the case. So. The connections, we have 
the fan here, uh, the power pack here, the hard drive is here. I'm not going to be needing this box again, so I'm going to put it away so I can have enough space uh, to work with on the table. So I'm going to put the box away for now. Uh, this is the box for the processor. And I'm going to keep this also so that when I need it later, I can I can have it. So, And I'm not going to be needing this again, so I'll put them away for now. Now it gets to the hard drive. For the hard drive, I'm going to be needing just one cable because I'm using just one traditional 3.5 hard drive and it's two terabyte, enough space for gaming and everything. It's not the fastest drive out there, but at least you can have it to have enough space. And later, if you have time to expand or to get an SSD, you can get an SSD. But remember, first build, you can also have an SSD. It's not a must that you have to have a traditional hard drive. You can have an SSD or M, uh, M2 um, card because this board does take M2. But I'm going to be using the traditional 3.5 hard drive. Here is a slot for the M2, but I'm not using that for now. And here are the places you connect your drives. I have four bales for connecting my drives on this board. Some board have more and some have less. And I'll show you how to connect it in a very quick and easy way. Uh, in the back, I don't know if you can see it from here, but it's already been labeled as a SATA 1, SATA 2, SATA 3, SATA 4. So the top one is going to be 1, the down one is going to be 2, and this is going to be 3, this is going to be 4. I want it to be in 1, so I'm going to put it here as uh, my 1 SATA cable which goes directly into your drive. If you're connecting an SSD or even an hard drive, this is what you get in both. This connection, the SATA connection. So there's a cut here in the big, if you look at it very well, there's a little bit of a cut, uh, like showing like an L if you turn it this way. And you look onto here again, there's also an L shape. You have to connect them to fit into each other and it goes in this way and they are connecting to each other and you place that on the table you get your power pack a little bit tricky about the power pack they are modular power packs but this is not because this is very very cheap it's not a modular part i have a cheap one for now i want to test my board and see that it's running you can connect an hdmi to a display and make sure it's boots and shows so to be able to do that look at this power pack there are this this is the board connection is the huge biggest part of the system and this is for the motherboard it powers the motherboard and is broken into two because of some of them just need just one and this has two you can put them together there's a place to just make them fit together and holes together and make sure you have them together like this and on the other side here has this clip which shows you this is the front and that is the back so hold it this way and look onto your board you can see there's a very big slot here this is the only bigger one that can fit this no other place so you put it together and insert it into that place and you hear, uh, you're gonna hear a clip and that has been locked in place if you turn the board into to the other way around there's another one here if you look at it it said cpu power one so it means this is going to power the cpu and they've made it easier for you on your board on your power pack also it comes with this cable is broken into two also put them together if you look at it very well they're already together but in case they are not aligned together, put them together because they are all going to go into the board on top of here and make sure they are set and you push them in. And that's another click is in. Try to push them around so you don't uh, disturb anything. Now my computer can actually power on. Um, sometimes you don't need to connect the drive before you do the check-in. 
but if you're connecting it to a display, you just use the HDMI cable, so, and you have the SATA on, you can basically use your computer this way if you have a keyboard and mouse. So, an HDMI cable, um, an HDMI cable goes directly, yeah, please. yeah, yeah, the HDMI cable goes into the HDMI port, into the HDMI port, and that's the HDMI, so you connect the other side to your monitors. I brought out a monitor to use to display what the board is transmitting so you can see it that is working. We have connected all this. Remember, you don't need to connect the hard drive, but I'm just going to show you how to connect the hard drive. And here, you can see the jumper FP, which is for power. And there, there are nine uh, pins. From the one that has just one, that is the ninth one, on the other side, the power on is the first two uh, pins. With a screwdriver, any screwdriver, bring a flat one or this one, you try to connect the two fours together. Don't worry, you're not going to blow anything. When you hold it on it, it begins. Now the fan is rolling for the processor fan. And the power pack fan is also rolling. And now the display comes MSI, who shows you the system now is working and is in good condition. So at this point now, it means everything is connected fine. I didn't put a keyboard or mouse in it yet. I can turn it off and transfer it into the casing that we are using. So I'm going to power it off the same way I turn it on, which is by pressing, uh, holding it just a little bit and it goes off by itself. So it's off. Then I switch off the power pack. Whenever the fan stops, I switch off the power pack. I remove the power. Keep yourself safe, not trying to electrify yourself. I remove the power from the back of the fan and I can remove this monitor so I don't push it down by mistake. So try to put everything on a nice uh, surface so you don't push anything away. So monitor away. And I now need to disconnect every uh, cable that is connected to the motherboard so we can transfer it into the casing. So to remove the power cable here, this is just like a clip. You push it back, it opens, and hold your board down with your finger so that you can be able to pull it out. So when you hold it down, press this and pull it out. Remember, do it gently. Don't force anything. You do it gently, like you're shaking it and bringing it out. The, this one is off. And for the hard drive also, there's a button to press here, just like a clip. You press it and pull it out gently. Don't push hard on your board. Don't push your board down. Just hold wherever you need to remove. And here also, I just hold it down. It's just like a clip for uh, the women are using for clothes. And I'm putting my hand on this I.O. and uh, uh, the uh, radiator to push it and bring it out. The HDMI cable, I pull it out. You can use your other hand to hold it and pull it out so you don't damage anything. So the board is free and is on its own now. I'm not going to remove the processor, the fan, and the DRAMs. I'm going to leave it on there to transfer it into the casing and every other thing. Okay, I have my uh, casing. I'm using this uh, Shakun casing. I like it because of the front I.O. I may change along the line. And this is going to be like the computer I'm going to be using for a while. So now we need to move the motherboard into the case. And I have this that comes with your board. Is the I.O. shield. And you try to insert it into its rightful place by... Uh, there's a place for it, just make sure you have it aligned and push it in, it's going to click. There. Sorry if the noise is too much, everything is now clicked into place. 
you hear the sound and when you push it you find out they're already in place and you pick oh before we go to picking up the motherboard you can see the uh, the screws there this little little screws uh, that you can use to mount your board this can actually accept a bigger board but I'm using a smaller one so you can pick up your board and check where the screws you're going to be using are going to go into and I already put them into place you can put your board on it and check the holes look at it if they are lying together after everything has been uh, put into place yeah, oh shit is wrong. there she is right so everything now is in place you look at the screws if they are aligned well if you need to change anyone you can try to change them uh, I'm not having a proper lens like a micro lens to get it deep into seeing what you need to see but look at it when the middle one is aligned it means the other ones are in places and you need to just have to screw them down onto the casing himself so there are screws that comes with different casings and uh, you have them on your magnetic screwdriver and screw them down into places don't press too much or too hard you may be wondering why didn't i use my electric uh gadget or whatever uh the ground to stabilize it because i'm i'm on a carpet and there's no way i can get electrified on a carpet because no connection to the ground so but if you have one please try to use it okay so i'm gonna screw the board down to the to the case which I got enough screws for everything make sure you try to use all the screws to hold it firm down to the ground so I have everything in place I'm gonna be like put everything down to where they need to be enough screws don't screw around try to make everything in order align together this takes about uh, six, five to six screws. Uh, yeah, five. This is just five, so I have everything in place. So now the board is inside. Everything is in place. And, and if you are having a radiator, you're going to have to mount your board before you put the fan on top of the CPU. So now we need to go to the connection. That is the cable management on how to put the cables in the board. So I'm gonna stand up the casing to this side. Revealing the back of the case, because this is gonna be the front and this is gonna be the back. These are the connection I.O. for the power, USB, and stuff like that. And uh, cable management. You can take your time to do enough of the cable management. I'm just gonna like pass the ones I need from the under to have a proper well cable management. So this, apart from the ones that control the reset button and everything, goes in from under here for now which is the usb cable and everything and i think i would like to get this one from under too so i can have everything in a very good order before you start doing cable management you need to connect everything have everything connected before you start thinking about cable management get everything in place then you can now start to arrange the cable as you want design it whatever you want there's a you can use zip ties or anything to put them into the right places so i'm going to put the board down so you can see the inside because you're going to be working on the inside the blue one that is for the usb uh, 3 on it goes into jumper usb 3 which is on the board um why how do i know that if you look here onto the um, 
always be connector. You can see it's almost the same. The other one that is here for you to use does not work because it's not the right connection. One part is missing. Only this has the proper one. Uh, you can see on top here, the last one is blocked. So it means it only can go into this place. I cannot show you very well on the board because I don't have a proper way to, to see it very well on the board. So I'm going to use this one here and uh, it's going to be for my USB. That is in place. You may as well use the other one. I got the one for the HD audio and USB. USB is written all over here. You can see USB 1, USB 2. So I'm going to be using the USB 1. And like I said, one side is also blocked. USB 1 goes in here. And the one for, it's written on it, HD audio. audio. It's going to be the last one. That is the John Paul 1. I think we should do a video about all this connection later. So you can have the good idea of everything. Be careful when you're pushing down. Make sure everything doesn't break your motherboard. Don't use any force. Anything that doesn't go in, the first time you push it in, if it doesn't go in, stop and check it very well. So, um, the fan, this LED fan, is an LED fan that is behind. I'm gonna use the fan, uh, system fan one, to connect it. So I'm gonna put it here, the system fan one. So that's going to be there. I'll find a way to put the cables together so it's not dangling everywhere. And now, now bring us to the power uh, connection, the power reset. I'm going to start with the power and power reset button first. I'm going to put the two of them together because if you look onto the paper I told you before, you can see they are side by side from the one that has the first pin. So, um, I don't know if you can see very well here, the power button comes before the LED powers. So it shows no pin is the first one, which is the taint one. There's no, there's no pin. Oh, okay. There's no pin there. So we have to do that on a proper way. So power switch and the reset LED needs to go to the first line. I put them together to be able to put them inside we don't have a proper lens that can do what we are trying to do so I'm, I'm sorry we have to do another video about that to show you the proper way I'm just we're just here with just two small APS cameras and uh, there's a limit to what those cameras can do unless you're buying the high-end glass to get your work done so we will get there we get there that is connected so everything is in place when it comes to this cable if you like you can go back here if you're the one that likes to be very very tidy and try to place this stuff so that they are very very clean into their rightful places so i'm gonna use this for now until later we put in a zip tie to put this cable together i'm not using an ssd so i will not be using that slot for now this two bay for the ssd for now so i'm going to leave it there and i'm going to move this up and try to hold it down with this uh clip oh okay so i have a zip tie i'm going to be using I don't want to use a zip tie before, but now I have one because uh, there was no one close to me before. So now I have one. You can zip tie is much easier to use. Just zzz. yeah, that's tight. This is a simple cable management. You can still do more and better. This is just a simple one, and that is done. And now we need to insert the power pack. You can push this out if you want to have a very clear view from here. So, guys, I'm going to try to put the hard drive and in this place, it's very easy to get the hard drive in with whatever uh, they have here with a cage. This is the bill for the hard drive. 
I don't need to use any screwdriver because I can just pop it in. Nice of Shakun uh, giving us an easy pop in hard drive bell. It holds it in place, it's not moving. And you can insert your hard drive inside. It clicks. The hard drive cable is there. Because my board I.O. I hear, so I'm gonna be bringing it from the side here on the hard drive one here. Makes it a little bit more cleaner. Yeah, clean. Oh, you see that you remember this fan cable? I'm gonna try to put them together so it doesn't look messy. It doesn't look messy, so everything is clean. There's a longer cable, but yeah, I'm gonna put them together. Maybe we'll use a zip tie later so it looks very clean and everything is not flying anywhere. Okay, no, that's not good. Let me do it very well again. Yeah, yeah. Put it together and this video is gonna be a little bit longer, but I hope I pass the message to you, my friends. Building your own computer, have fun with it. Don't get tired trying to be, you don't have to do it one time like me. You can do it, stop, come back to the video and continue to go on with it. So now we get going to the power pack. Now we are here, we need to go to the power pack. We still have to put this together to make it more cleaner in the side, but you have a case that is hiding it so nothing shows there. So I'm gonna put this on one side here, get my power pack. You can get a modular power pack. I don't have a modular one here, but you can get a modular one. Why do you need a modular one? So some cables you are not gonna be needing. You can easily don't have them connected. But luckily for we, we have something that hides the, the power pack. So we have a cable management um, panel here that hides it away from the front shelf. So I'm gonna be using um, just one for my hard drive, the one for my computer, that is a board and this one for the CPU. So I need to take this one and toss it away. So I'm gonna like put them together before I put the power pack into my system. So I don't have problems with this cable when I'm, not, when I'm working. I'm not using any GPU. So I'm gonna keep away the GPU uh, cable also. Um, included with this to have a very clean and easier setup. If you are using an hard drive or you are using um, a system uh, of more hard drives like two and a system ROM uh, that is a CD drive, you can also bring out one more to be able to get up there. But I'm just going to be using an hard drive and my operating system is going to be installed from a USB. So I'm going to like uh, put this away for now until further along the line, I'm doing some up upgrades on my uh, computer to be able to, to bring them out. So I'm using a small zip tie and that is it. Now it's very clean and normal. My fan, my fan is going to be facing down. There are some that faces the side or wherever, but mine is facing down. And here I have a mesh under my uh, casing to get a airflow under here and the uh, fan can get some flow. So, oh, some of this power pack or some of this has a plate that you can bring out the plate, connect it to your power pack and the power pack goes in from uh, the back. But my, is, my case is not like that, it's going to go in from the side. There's a place for you to stand it like a feet in the case. It's made out of rubber and I'm just going to like show you that. There are four screws and I'm going to like screw them uh, together to get them in the right 
places. We have our power in place and uh, we need to connect the power pack uh, with the computer. So if you look up here, this is the place you use to connect your CPU power. You can slide it in from there and you can route it along this side to have a proper cable management. And for the motherboard power, it goes in from this side. Uh, your, your casing may be different from what you're looking at here because every different casing uh, has a different uh, cable management system. So I need to put the computer upside down. So for me not to break anything, I'm gonna try to put my cable inside the system while I turn it um, upside down so it doesn't break anything. So that was what I just did by arranging that. So now we need to connect the power back the same way we did it before. This a uh, cut out here. I'm not sure if you can see it very well. Try to align them together. And remember, this is the front facing you or behind you in whatever you're doing. And try to push inside into uh, a clip. That is done. And now we go to the CPU power also. Put them together in case there are two or no, sometimes some button is just one and you clip them together. They are done. So basically, if you have a GPU, you need to connect the GPU also, which is when you use this slot to hold it in place. And that is what this is uh, meant for. So, but we are not using any GPU because the uh, processor has an inbuilt uh, GPU inside. So, that brings us back to the back. Um, this is when you now try to do your cable management at your own convenient time. So for my, I'm just going to put it aside here for now. Get some zip ties. There are places you can use to hold it. You can see, you can hold them here to have them in a proper way. And this also, there's too much of it in the other side. Bring them out back and bring them to the side. And this time around, you can turn upside down to have them put in places to hide the cable. This big one, I'm gonna toss it down here in this space because there's enough space there for keeping it there. And I'm gonna bring this ones also down and everything now you can see is clean in the back here. I'm gonna close it up. Because for now I'm done. Oh, sorry, I didn't connect the power for the hard drive. I forgot, hard drive never forgets to connect the power for the hard drive. I did forget just now. And that goes connected here. This is the intake fan from, for the uh, front of the casing. You can control it via the board or you just connect it directly to the power source. The same way you set up this computer is the same way you set up a gaming computer. The only difference between this normal computer is a graphics card, which is not included in this one because the processor has a graphics built into it. So graphics card is your decision. The, some of them is even more expensive, but it's your decision to decide what graphics card you're gonna use. So we're gonna power on the computer to check if everything works. The computer is on. The light on the motherboard came on. Uh, if you can see, there's a red light on the motherboard that shows you the motherboard is being powered on. Uh, the fan and also the CPU and the uh, fan is rolling. So that is what we have. That shows you now the booting system is not there. We don't have any operating system for now. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna go into the bio setup. That is a system setup for the motherboard. I'm gonna press the enter key uh, continuously until it displays on the screen uh, the setting of the BIOS. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for now. So that is the BIOS setting. 
So it shows you the CPU speed, the DRAM speed, and every other things you need to know, the frequency and everything. So if you need to know more about this uh, interface, uh, you should go to MSI. There's more about it over there. It's not going to be included in this video because this is how to assemble your system. And I've done the assembly and show you how uh, it works and power on. So guys, thanks for um, watching in this video. We need money for a tripod our lap is falling down we need a c-stand so i hope you guys can smash the like button subscribe and use our uh, amazon links so we can get some commission to buy a better tripod a better c-stand c-stand i mean not tripod c-stand so guys have a nice day and i hope you enjoy your own build you can go forward, backward in this to just prepare your own build and you can upgrade from there. Odabo. Bye.